thing that's really unique about brands in sports is that a lot of it is defined by our players, right? Uh, and I, I like to talk a lot about our brand is often defined by the legacy of two men, which is Pat Bowen and John Elway. That's a lot of responsibility. It's a lot of responsibility that they have largely defined what our organization is all about. So uh, we also often talk sometimes internally about how do you carry on the legacy of those two men in our brand. So I've been here 15 years, which is only scratching the surface of our history, but a lot of those things are just passed down through different generations, right? And we, we allow ourselves to continue to be innovative and push the envelope and how we connect our brand to the community and vice versa. But there are some inherent things that our brand stands for that will never change. And whether you're in one of our conference rooms and we have guiding words and brand essence words that are on the walls of our conference room, so we try and surround ourselves with who we are and, and what we wanna be into the future. When you look at some of the traditional sports brands, if you think about the, uh, whether it's Man U or the New York Yankees or some other iconic sports brands, they haven't changed. The pinstripes of the Yankees yeah. is not gonna change. Uh, yeah. and the I, two color teams. The two color teams, and I think we wanna be an iconic brand and that means we don't wanna change all that much. 1960 through where we are today, we've only had four variances in our uniform. One of those was the old uh, brown and mustard yellow yeah, that the we wore, the bumblebee unis, unis uh, which were awesome, uh, were. that uh, survived I think 1960 and 1962. And then they were burned in a big bonfire uh, on the field after the last game at, at uh, Denver Bear Stadium. I remember, you know, 10 years ago in both MLB and the NBA, if you wanted to change your branding, right? Logos, fonts, yeah. colors. You, know, you needed to go through these submission processes that were years, yeah. you know, and half of it was sort of, could you keep it a secret that long? Because that's what it's going to take to get the seats changed, the broadcast partners on point. Now we see with a lot of our customers, this just dynamic creative. And not only is it dynamic creative, tons of different uniforms and color schemes and breast cancer awareness. Yeah. And how do you guys do that on a logistics level? That's hard. It's hard. I think one of the things you'll see is that our core brand and the way we represent that brand, whether it's uniforms, that's not changing, right? A lot of the ancillary things around that core brand, their gloves and their cleats, the iconic view of a 300-pound uh, NFL lineman wearing pink gloves and pink cleats uh, was, I think, one of the brilliant marketing things that's happened in the NFL but the core uniform is not changing, right? So a lot of the same things still apply. In 2012, we made the decision to go back to orange jerseys as our primary jersey color. That was a long process uh, of not only doing our research, but getting that done with the NFL. We're working with Nike, we're working with a lot of suppliers in the merchandise realm to make sure that we have time to transition those things. A lot of event-based type things will continue to evolve and change, but that core brand, what we represent to our fans, we wanna keep it pretty consistent. Our ability to deliver our brand sometimes is actually about how we police our brand. And we spend a lot of time actually cracking down on unlicensed use of our brand, sure. right? Yeah. Uh, something as simple as a real brand enforcement. Brand enforcement is huge for us, right? And, as and well the, as- and, and also that violates the people who have licensed that's it. That's exactly right. So we spend a lot of time, believe it or not, and we enable our entire organization to be our brand police. It's so a team sport. It's a team sport. If you get a flyer in the mail at home and there's a real estate agent that has put together a Broncos schedule uh, that has our brand on it. We need to know that. If somebody's doing an unlicensed ticket promotion, that's all in association to our brand. And so uh, we have an entire team that's dedicated to- yeah. Somebody uh, else already paid for that. Somebody else already paid for that. Uh, in particular, it's, it's, a, it's a competitive dynamic uh, in terms of sponsorship, and uh, we wanna make sure we're protecting our partners. So. A lot of our customers deal with their brand and then all of this other branding, right? So you talk about these umbrella sponsorships that go across the NFL, you have your own sponsorships. Yeah. How do you guys go about managing all that? I mean, the, the amount of, of, of assets and creative just in general is growing so tremendously. Yeah. I mean, if, you, if you'd have told people like, half of your job is gonna be collecting images of every seat from every from 360 degrees, like 10 years ago, the people would have no idea what you're talking about. Our ability to connect with our customer base and our fan base and understand them and communicate to them is huge. The investment our fans make in our brand uh, only continues to increase and will only continue to increase. Uh, so our ability to, as you point out, 
have an image of that's my seat. What does the field look like from my seat? Whether that's an intent to purchase or somebody who just wants to brag to their friends or family that that's my seat. Yeah. Our ability to deliver that is huge. And that's what the fans expect. And that's what the fans demand from us. And so in order to keep up, we have to provide the technology and the customization and the personalization that fans are getting with every other brand they interact with. Mm -hmm. And we have to deliver that. Mm -hmm.